Okay. Here we go. Yeah, with this the is corner getting fun pin. now. Corner pin projection map. We're projection mapping. So, um, this actually includes, uh, I'm just including video planes and corner pins and GL text all in the same thing here. Usually I just show corner pins for projection mapping. But uh, projection mapping is the, um, I mean, we could do a whole lecture on projection mapping, yeah. but it's where you use a projector in order to precisely shine light from the projector onto a physical object such that uh, uh, you're actually mapping the light onto various surfaces of right. the object. So um, kind of using a projector like it's a camera. But the way, um, the, way you need to do, the way to do that is you need to be able to precisely adjust the positioning of the videos you're trying to play back onto these devices of the, or, or the live input or videos or whatever. So um, let's just jump right in here. So we're gonna, we have a JIT.world. Everything in yellow has to do with the JIT world. So we have this JIT.world object that creates this window, which is an OpenGL world that we can place three-dimensional objects into. So corner pinning actually uses this JITGL corner pin object and it tells it says to um, render into the my world which is what I this is the name I gave uh, this JIT world uh, so it's gonna render it in here and there's a bunch of stuff here I've added that lets you easily save the positions of the corners so one of the annoyances for a long time was that corner pinning in Max is great except when you save your patch the location of, let's say you've made a fancy projection mapping patch and it's got you know, all, all the precise mappings from your projector to your object that you're projecting onto, but then you close the patch and reopen it for some reason and all that data's gone, you have to remap the whole thing. So that's kind of a pain. So this will actually lets you save it. And the way it does it is it actually just puts all the locations of the corners into a message box. Message boxes do get saved when you, I'm not using any fancy max uh, parameter saving methods. Right. I'm just, I like to just do it simply by stuffing the data into a message box. And then when you hit save, it saves that message box with uh, the patch. So here you can say everything you're doing uh, in all of these, I think video plane and corner pane will both do this. If you hit saving, uh, it will save, you know, it'll um, put all the data of where the corners and video planes are into this uh, uh, message box. You also then have to save your patch. So this doesn't actually save your patch. It just right. saves the data into the thing. But let's open up uh, the grabber and uh, let's turn on the JIT world. All right, so we see a couple of things here. We've got a video plane, uh, which is kind of small here in the center. But then we've got, um, I'm going to make that layer zero and I'm gonna make a corner pinning layer one. So that should make the video plane go behind the corner pin, which is fine, that's what I want. So it's still there, it's just now it's, it's still there. It's just behind it. Physically behind the other one. Okay, um, now you'll see that these corners are here. This is part of, this is one of the features of JIT GL corner pin. The object is called uh, JIT.GL.CornerPin, and it lets you uh, map video to a, um, a plane you know, like a flying postcard in this JIT world, but it also then lets you uh, move the corners and the image warps according to where you're moving these corners around. So if I had the top of a box and I wanted this video to appear on the top of a box from a projector, I could like map it so that the light was coming out of the projector and then you can hit full screen and there it goes. You've still got these corners here, uh, but you can turn them off. Just say corner pin, handle radius, turn them all off at the same time, or you can turn them off one by one here. That'll, that'll make more sense. So um, you can change the background of your rendering. And if you, I like to make mine gray when I'm setting everything up and then switch down to black when I'm actually doing the projection. But um, there we have a uh, projection mapped, uh, you know, a corner pin video, live video. It doesn't matter if it's live or pre-recorded, and uh, you can have a lot of them on the screen at the same time. So at the same time we're doing the corner pinning, we also have a video plane, which is, where is it? It's behind it. I thought I put it over here. Oh, there it is. So we can scale it and we can move it and uh, we can change its transparency. Uh, we can also change the transparency of the, uh, the corner pinned version. Um, we can change the layer order. Uh, and oh you know what that's not corner pin i have to save the name of it this is actually video plane i think i was just copying and pasting um 
Yeah, so video planes are less powerful than corner pins. Um, you can also change the rotation. I haven't exposed that to the outside here, but you can easily rotate a, uh, a uh, video plane. So we'll set that back to zero here for a second. Okay. Um, video planes and corner pins, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. They just do slightly different things. Corner pin With is great. With corner for, pin, you're going to yeah. be able to like stretch and manipulate, you know, precisely. Whereas video plane, it's going to keep it kind of in its aspect ratio ish yeah 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 you can't warp it so much right and um, it's easy to make multiple corner pins so if you have a bunch of objects you want to project onto you just duplicate this thing and well that's all there is to it you just have now you have another one and, and that's uh, where the layer comes in really handy yeah. because you can kind of decide what you want to have on top yeah yeah so this could go here, and then if you made a, the layer order different, then that one becomes above, above, and you can adjust the transparency. Uh, and you can have a lot of these. It's, it's computationally inexpensive to add video planes um, or corner pins. They're, they don't add much more CPU usage. I think they're pretty much rendered on the video card, so it doesn't really matter. You can have a hundred of them. Uh, it doesn't really degrade the performance. Um, you can have multiple video sources too. So you could have three videos playing it at three separate corner pins uh, or you know, two corner pins and a video plane. Uh, but let's talk about text. Um, yeah. So here is another object that I've added into this demo, which is typically just corner pinning. But now we have video plane, corner pin, and we'll show this here text. So um, this object is called G GL text. And I'm rendering the text into this thing called my world, which is the uh, yellow box here, which is the JIT world that we've created. So um, I'm going to make the font list. And then this is all the system fonts on my computer. Let's just say, uh, oh man, there's too many fonts here. Helvetica, whatever. <laughs> font list Helvetica. OK, so um, how do I make it actually? I think I have to hit this text. It's not. Um Shouldn't it be connected? No, no, it should be rendering. Um, it might be just like behind the, let's say zero. There it is. Um, yeah, so there's a layer number for the text as well, and that needs to change. So we can change the font size, and we can change the alignment left. So the question um, I had asked for those of you who are watching this, as I said, shouldn't it be connected? But um, what I realized, obviously, and after you said it, is in if you look at the JIT GL text there, that object, you'll see it says my world after it, which is by identifying my world, it's going to that JIT world. Yes, right. It's just telling it where to render to. Right. Yeah. Right. And there's all these parameters. So you change the fonts, the font size, the line length, uh, the tracking, you want the letters to be farther apart or whatever, um, and all that. You can make them actually 3D, but that's kind of another demo. Uh, <laughs> how, so how do, we, how do we make some text appear in here that, that uh, makes sense? So let's just do a counter. Uh, let's do 1 to 100, uh, 1 to 1,000, and we'll hook up our Metro 100 there, turn it on. I like where this is going. Numbers. Now, you have to tell it that the word text here is not displayed. So it's the text is the actual command that you're telling uh, this object inside here, JIT, uh, GL text. So you tell it what text to display by sending it this text message, and it will display everything that comes after the word text. So what we could do is, oh, this is, might be a little tricky. Prepend so text. Prepend text. With right. the dollar sign one? Prepend text. You don't need, you uh, don't need the dollar sign? Don't need the dollar sign one. Um, but it's not a symbol yet, so it might need to be a symbol. My guess is this is, might not work. Uh, let's see. Oh, it does work. Great. That's okay, all it so uh, <laughs> let's make it a little faster. Let's say 30. There we go. So, Ooh, flying. And so that's you know a nice easy way to put text on your screen wherever you want it. Um, and you can overlay it over video, which is kind of nice. Let's say, yeah, overlays nicely on the video. It changes size a little bit depending on when you full screen, but uh, let's just ignore that for now. Um, all right, so corner pinning is the basic projection mapping system. Video planes can be used mostly for screen-based work if you want to just position video on your monitor right. or on a screen or on a projection. Uh, I use video planes just for positioning really accurately. Corner pinning for projection mapping. And then text overlays are 
always useful. Yep. Okay.